I'm Frances Bow. I'm a consultant clinical scientist. When your doctor requests a blood test, it's part of a spectrum of tests the GP might request. Ferritin is a storage compound for iron in the body. You require sufficient ferritin to be able to make haemoglobin and it carries oxygen around the body. If a patient's got too little ferritin, it shows that their stores of iron in the body are very low. They'll be tired and as if, if their haemoglobin has dropped, they may be feeling rather breathless. If you've got too much, it may be deposited in the body and you'll have effects on other organs of the body. When your doctor requests a blood test, first of all, you'll have to go and have your blood sample taken. The blood sample is then sent to the laboratory and today you'll see what is going to happen to our sample. Uh, my name is Frank and I'm a medical courier. We bring them to the hospital in a temperature control bag. My name is Vandana. I work at St George's as a biomedical support worker. Hi, my name is Chelsea. I'm one of the reception supervisors at St George's. Every sample that we get, we log it. It's just to ensure that we actually receive the sample. It's important so we can track the samples through the system to make sure that we're receiving and get the results. And that's that done. The chemistry sample next, we go going into centrifuge to be spun. Centrifuge is a machine which spins the blood at a very high speed because we want to separate the plasma from the blood. Plasma is a fluid in the blood. So today we're measuring on ferritin. So we're aiming to measure the ferritin in the plasma. Once it's separated, once I've decapped it, I will load into the machine and then let the BMS know the test that they are uh, waiting for, it, so which is ferritin. It's all about teamwork, basically, and communication. If you're, uh, if you're working in a lab, you would need that mainly. After this, the biomedical scientist will take over from here. My name's Chris, I'm a biomedical scientist. So this, this analyzer will take in the samples so that they can be run for any tests that are needed. It can do various tests simultaneously so they can be sampled at multiple different analyzers. And the technology is very important as we, we run between eight to 9,000 samples every day. So it's very important that we have these, but also our knowledge as well. So we need these to process a lot of samples quickly, but we still need our knowledge in terms of troubleshooting problems and fixing any errors. We also have a, a very large manual section. So we have a lot of different techniques as opposed to the automated analyzer around here so a lot of variety after that time if it's normal and it's you know similar to the patient's previous it will automatically be released if however it's high or low this result will be flagged up and it will be brought to the attention of one of the biomedical scientists within the department most of the role of the clinical scientist to, is to actually look at the results that have been produced on the analyzers by the biomedical scientists and we comment on the results to say whether they're low whether the patient has got iron deficiency or low iron stores, and we'll put those comments out to primary care. We don't regard these as results that we would phone out to GPs, but quite frequently we may get phone calls for further information about the test. Hi, I'm Marshall, and I'm an advanced biomedical support worker. At this stage, we've taken the sample off the analyzer, and I'm gonna manually check to make sure all the tests have been completed. No two days are the same. You get so many different strain samples, and it's just the you know, science behind it, which I find quite interesting. So, my name's Daniela DeSalvo Williams, and I'm a biomedical support worker for St. George's. This is the track, and this is where samples go to be filed once they've been tested and completed. The track will begin to take those samples and will scan them by barcode to determine that the tests are finished and where they will go. I like that it's fast paced, they're never bored most certainly. <laughs> this is where all our samples are stored and they're kept refrigerated as our blood samples must be stored for at least five days. What we do is we take it out, for example take this one over here. These racks are then taken to the cold room out here. We've got a very large cold room so as you can see, there's lots of samples stored here, it's at least a few thousand. My name is Zabihullah Safi, and I'm working as a biomedical support worker. So we, are, we have done the test, so we're just keeping it for a week, just in case if the doctor is calling us back, okay, we need a particular test to be added, and then after that, we will take them and check them away. David Greenwood, Quality Manager and Health and Safety Advisor. The portering team from the Trust collect these bins on a daily basis and take them 
outside where they're collected and then taken to a company that incinerates them for us. This means that the samples are destroyed in a safe manner, because they are clinical waste, um, and also any patient identification data that's on the samples themselves is also destroyed. So when you eventually go to get your test results back, which will come back very quickly, there are lots of people involved in every single stage of getting this sample properly processed from the courier who brings the sample to the laboratory, the receptionist who books the sample in, the technical staff who analyse the sample, the clinical scientists who validate it, and then we have a whole background group of people who ensure the results get transmitted correctly through to your GP. You know that you make a difference. It's not every single day, but once in a while you think, I've actually made a massive difference in that person's life because we've been able to get to a diagnosis really quickly.